Once we've asked the questions of it, the big thing or the big questions that we need to ask of the text is its context. And so the problem with the New Testament is being able to identify the context. As we've already looked at in terms of looking at each of the books of the New Testament, the New Testament is written over a relatively short period of time. It's written from around about 45 through to about 100 AD. So only a period of about 60 years. And so the problem with that is that that 60 years, it's hard to really pin down exactly the context of each book. In fact, what we have to do in order to find the context of each book is really to look within the book itself and to make certain assumptions, certain conclusions from what we find in the book. Are those assumptions or conclusions correct? Well, none of us can ever say that it's absolute. In fact, we don't even know when each of the books were written. And in fact, even the information that we have about when they're written, again, comes from external sources which are limited. And so because those external sources are limited, it means that it becomes much, much more difficult for us to really pin down some of the context. Now, of course, some people will say, well, the reason for that is that therefore let's forget about their context and let's concentrate on ours. My response to that is to say that that would still do an injustice to the text. Even if we look back into the past and we look back in a place which is unclear, even though we look back and not really able to understand the complete context or the complexity of what we're looking at, I still think that we still need to spend some time understanding the context in which we are working. To understand the Roman occupation, to understand the influence of the emperors like Nero and Tiberius and Augustus. To understand the influence of the Jews being in the diaspora and the fact that Paul himself was a diaspora Jew. To understand the different people groups that were within the, the, uh, the, the time of Jesus. Uh, the time, in fact, after Jesus in the time of the writing of the New Testament. All those things are important for us to know if we're going to be able to interpret the, the actual text itself. And so therefore discovering and acknowledging context is such an important tool in our arsenal for interpretation. Now I know that for many of us we'll say, well how are we meant to know what was happening in that time? How are we meant to know the context? Well it's in those times that we can refer to something like this, a handbook to the Bible. Now again, there's no one handbook that is completely correct. There's no one handbook that gives you all the answers and all the connections. And as I mentioned before, one of the big problems that we have in many of the handbooks, particularly the handbooks to the New Testament, is that they don't really take enough cognizance of the Tanakh. And certainly not enough cognizance of explaining some of the Hebrew and Jewish concepts of tradition and the Jewish concepts that are within the New Testament itself. The problem with that means is that we lose some of the richness of the text. When in fact we don't understand that Matthew is writing from a Jewish perspective and therefore we need some help in explaining some of the Jewish anticipation of what he's writing, we don't really understand what Matthew's saying properly. When we look at the book of Revelation and all that we see within Revelation is somehow what's going to happen at the end of the world, we again miss the point of the fact that so many of those concepts within Revelation came by virtue of the relationship or the interaction between the Jews and now the Greeks and the Romans. Because a lot of the concepts that are within the book of Revelation come out of Greek and Roman mythology. And so therefore we need to have a sense of what those things are about if we're going to understand them at all. Unless we understand the pluralistic, the nature of the environment where there was many gods, there were many religions. Unless we acknowledge those and acknowledge also the power that those other religions have on interpreting scripture, we again misunderstand a lot of what Paul was talking about, particularly when he writes to Ephesus and when he writes to the Corinthians. In fact, even when he writes to Timothy, he's writing into a context. And unless we understand the context, often what we do is we miss the point of the whole thing. So I want to encourage you to read around the text. That in fact we've been talking already to read with many translations, to ask questions of the text. But now I want to encourage you also to read around the text. To read the context of this particular area. To read the background material. 
Sometimes you'll find that in things like a study Bible where that material will be available. But I want to encourage you to read even more broadly than that. So that if you're reading on the book of Corinthians, that you do as much research as you can about Corinth. That would help you then to put yourself into the shoes of the Corinthians. And by virtue of that, help you to understand what Paul is trying to address when he speaks to that group. When we look at this, discovering context is very difficult. It is difficult. And in fact, it's an, in, an inexact concept as well. Because what we need to realize is that we'll never have final answers. Each time new archaeology is done, each time new uh, documents are found, and they are still being found all the time because archaeology continues. So we can learn from that archaeology. So we can learn from those new documents. And we can actually add them to the store of our knowledge, helping us, therefore, to interpret the text. 